Hi, my name is Valerie Pearson and I'm from Green Living Australia and I'm also the author of Home Cheese Making in Australia. And what I want to talk to you about today is making coconut yogurt. So we've already discussed dairy yogurt in previous videos which you can access through my YouTube station. But coconut yogurt is a, my favourite non-dairy yogurt. I have a couple of family members who are lactose intolerant so this is my go-to for them. The first thing you need to know about coconut yogurt is you are going to be using a non-dairy yogurt culture. So this is the non-dairy yogurt culture. Just like all our other dairy and uh, cultures, kefir cultures, the various different packets of culture we have, they come in a packet that's enough to do 100 liters. So for less than $20, you can literally get 100 liters worth of culture to use in our yogurt maker. Our yogurt maker does one to two liters, and we really do go through a lot of coconut yogurt, so I'm going to be making a two liter batch today. So we'll just set the culture aside and talk about the other ingredients right now. The first ingredient that you're going to put in your yogurt maker is actually the coconut cream. So remember to get a coconut cream that is really coconut cream. You'd be surprised when you read the ingredient panel on some of the brands of coconut cream out there, how many of them don't have that much coconut cream. You're paying for coconut cream, but what you're getting might be half coconut cream and half water. So if you use a coconut cream that's very watered down, you're going to call me up wondering why you have a coconut yogurt that's very watered down. So remember what's on the front of the packet is the advertising, what is on the ingredient panel is the truth. I picked one that's 99.9% .9 coconut cream. There are brands that are half water and that's going to give you a much watered down result. The next ingredient that you're going to need to add is actually sugar. When you're making dairy yogurt, the bacteria, the lactic acid bacteria, they are eating lactose and turning it into lactic acid. That lactic acid gives you that beautiful tangy flavor. But there's not a lot of sugar in coconut cream. There's a lot of fat in coconut cream, which is great. Remember, fat doesn't make you fat, sugar makes you fat. So it's good fat. Uh, so I'm, I'm loving the amount of fat in it. it. Makes it a very decadent, lovely, delicious product to eat. But there's not enough sugar for the bacteria to eat. They're very specialized. They don't know what to do with the fat. They really need a simple disaccharide that's similar to lactose. So I just use table sugar. Don't worry, even though I'm telling you to use sugar, it's not to sweeten the product and it's not because I want you to eat the sugar. The sugar should all be consumed by the bacteria before you eat the yogurt. So really it's bacteria food. So for every liter of coconut cream that I put in, I'm going to put one tablespoon of sugar for the bacteria to eat, otherwise nothing is going to happen. If you skip the sugar because you don't like sugar, nothing will happen, you won't get yogurt. Remember the sugar is not for you. The second thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a thickening agent. When you're making dairy yogurt, it is actually the dairy proteins bonding together that give you your curd. So in order to get a curd without dairy protein, you're going to have to add a thickener. There are several thickeners that you could use, but a lot of them are inappropriate because of the requirement to keep the temperature in the bacteria's temperature range, which is 37 to 43. So let's have a look at some of the thickeners that are out there. So cornstarch. Cornstarch is a really common thickener that is used in kitchens throughout the country and probably all over the world. But it, unfortunately, it needs heat to activate it. So if you mix cornstarch with water, it just sinks to the bottom of the cup and doesn't do anything. But if you heat it, like bring it to the boil and cook it for two minutes, then you've got a gel. You can't do that with your coconut yogurt because then you'll kill the bacteria. The same is the, that's the same problem with the wheat based ones. Once again, you need to cook it and it's also got gluten in it, which I'm looking for something gluten free. Uh, there are some other plant based and seaweed based emulsifiers. Uh, one of them, which is uh, quite common uh, in cooking when you're looking for something gluten free is uh, agar agar. That dissolves wonderfully at 85, but it starts setting at 55. So as you're cooling it down to be able to add it into your yogurt, it's actually going to start setting, so that's not appropriate either. So what I'm going to use, this is what we recommend at Green Living Australia, is smooth gel. It gives you a beautiful smooth gel, hence its name. What it actually is, is a pre-gelatinized rice flour. So pre-gelatinization is a process of heat treating. So the first thing they do is they make sure it's finely milled. It's very similar to cornstarch, that the packet gives you that squeak like cornstarch does. So it's finely milled, which increases the surface area which means it's better at uh, thickening things. And then the second thing is it's 
heated to a particular temperature that takes the molecular structure and makes it go from this size to this size. So once again, it's increasing that surface area, which increases its ability to thicken things. So I go ahead and take one to two tablespoons of smooth gel and add that to my coconut cream. So I've got the coconut cream, the bacteria, some sugar to feed the bacteria, and some smooth gel to thicken it into that beautiful thickness that I'm looking for. So now we can go ahead and put those ingredients all together in our yogurt maker and go ahead and make the yogurt. So we'll just move this out of the way. The first thing we need to do is we need to scold off all our equipment. So I'm just gonna boil the jug and I'm gonna take the equipment that we're gonna use and I'm gonna scold them off. So I've got the internal pot compartment of the yogurt maker. I will scold that off. I'm gonna scold off the lid and I'm also gonna scold off the mixing implement, which is a sealed whisk that I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna put them over here on the sink so I don't make a mess. I've already got my culture, a plate, and some cleaned uh, spoons and measuring pieces for the bacteria, the smooth gel, and the sugar. I did those earlier because I wanted them to be dry in time to do this, and I didn't want you to have to wait around while I did all of that. So now I've boiled the jug. I'm gonna go ahead and scald off my equipment. So here we go. Sorry about that big loud, loud sound. Every time I tip boiling water on this, it, uh, it expands the metal. Okay, all right, so now I can go ahead. I've got the coconut cream actually sitting in a pot with some warm water. It came out of my pantry. Uh, it's not very cold here, but it is the middle of winter. It doesn't get that cold in Brisbane, but it's, I want to have it as close to 40 degrees as possible before I put my bacteria in. So I've just had it sitting in a pot of, uh, of hot water from the tap. I didn't put it in boiling water. I don't want it to get too hot, just hot enough that it gets close to 40 degrees. So go ahead and get your coconut cream out of your container. I'm gonna put just one liter in to start with, mostly because I'm pretty clumsy and I don't wanna make a big mess when I'm stirring a full container. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put one in. Now I'm gonna measure out my sugar and my smooth gel and I'm gonna measure them into a small bowl and I'm gonna mix them together before I add them. If you get smooth gel, which is a thickening uh, agent, and you just like plop you know, a couple of tablespoons in the middle, you might end up with lumps. If you mix it with your sugar, what is more likely to happen is that that sugar will act as a carrier and enable it to spread out without making any lumps. You don't want lumpy yogurt. So just that little bit of extra care is what we need. So just, I'm gonna do a two liter batch, so I'm actually gonna put two tablespoons of sugar in here. Okay, that's the sugar. And then this is the smooth gel. I've already got some that I've taken out of a packet and put in a container. Uh, and it says one to two tablespoons. So I like one tablespoon, and, uh, but you know, two tablespoons makes it thicker. So I'm gonna compromise, there's a fly in here. I'm gonna compromise and go ahead and put one and a half per liter. So that's a total of three. So set that aside, and then go ahead and mix these together. This is gonna make sure that you don't get lumps. You do need to whisk a bit like a crazy person when you're putting it in. Another idea is to use a stick blender. Uh, if you have a stick blender, that could work quite well as well. So just as I'm sprinkling it in, I'm mixing it, just to make sure I don't get any lumps. So just gradually pop it in here while whisking. Don't throw it all in the center in one big lump. And then give it a good whisk. Great, that's all it takes. Now I'm gonna add my bacteria. So remember it comes in a packet that does 100 liters. You've got sterile jars in here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that 100 liters worth of culture, put it in the first sterile jar, take 10%, put it in the second sterile jar, and then use that for your first batch of yogurt. So I'm gonna take just a small amount of that 10 liters worth, just enough for two liters, uh, and pop that in. 
There is a whole video on how to uh, dose your culture, how to divide it up. Go ahead and have a look for that on YouTube and watch that video for more details on that step. So I'm just going to get enough for two liters on the tip of a knife here. So you can see I'm really not using a lot, just a little bit. Pop that in. It goes a long way. It's, it's pure culture. This is not, you know, a lot of additives in here. It's just culture. The ingredient panel tells you exactly what bacteria is in there, and there's, there's nothing else in there except the culture. So I've mixed that in now. So now that I've done with all my, my uh, energetic whisking, I can go ahead and re add the rest of the coconut cream and mix that in. And as I said, the only reason I personally only put one liter in to start with is just because if I have two liters full and I'm whisking, it's likely to get all over the counter. Okay, so go ahead and add your other liter. Get all that coconut cream out of there. It's a bit thick, coconut cream, so do take the effort to get every little bit out. Perfect. Don't want to waste any of this beautiful coconut cream, so we'll get it all out. And then go ahead and mix that, of course, more calmly now so you don't make a mess. You've already mixed the culture, the smooth gel in, so it's really easy to go ahead and incorporate your next one liter in here. Great, I'm very happy with that. Okay. All right, now you can go ahead and put the lid on. And then get your yogurt maker. Put it in the yogurt maker. This dome will hold the heat inside. And then go ahead and plug it in. So I've got my plug over here. Unplug my kettle. Plug in my yogurt maker. And my coconut yogurt is on the go. So that is going to take 24 hours to ferment. You really do need to ferment it for 24 hours. Remember we put that tablespoon of sugar in? You don't want that sugar to still be there when you start eating it. So if you eat it and it doesn't have a tang and it's, you know, got that, you can taste that sugar, it hasn't been left in there long enough. So I've had people call me and say that they've made the coconut yogurt. It really wasn't that tangy. What's wrong? And one for one, they had left it in for about eight to 10 hours, which is how long it takes to make a dairy yogurt if you're not doing long fermentation. But for coconut yogurt, you really do have to have a long fermentation yogurt maker that's going to maintain the temperature accurately for an entire 24 hours. So there's our gorgeous coconut yogurt. This is gonna come out beautiful, rich, thick, and creamy. Uh, you're almost going to feel like you're doing something naughty when you're eating it because it is so decadent. But it's actually got lovely probiotic bacteria in acidophilus and bifidus, as well as your yogurt cultures. Uh, and it's, it's like having dessert in the morning with, uh, with a bit of muesli. It's absolutely incredible. I just can't get, I can't say enough about how good this particular coconut yogurt recipe is. So if you have any questions about making uh, coconut yogurt, dairy yogurt, or other yogurts, you can contact Green Living Australia. You can go to the website, greenlivingaustralia.com.au. There are lots of frequently asked questions. There's a blog that shows you how to do things step by step. Um, there's also a helpline that runs six days a week, so you can call Green Living Australia and ask for help uh, any day of the week except Sundays. And uh, we are going to keep coming to you with more great recipes. The next time that I talk to you, I want to talk to you about making jam, but I want to talk to you about making jam with no sugar. So we've got 1.7 million diabetics in Australia, so I want to do something about that. So I'm going to give you a way to make jam with no sugar. But that's the next time I talk to you. I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, please share this with other people that could benefit from learning how to make some things themselves that's healthy and, in this case, alive. Thanks a lot.